Whether you're hosting your wine tasting in person or over Zoom, figuring out how to make it run smoothly can make you want to guzzle down an entire magnum before the first guest arrives. I'm Tommy from Pocket Wine School, and right now we're talking about nine ways to host the perfect wine tasting. Ready? Let's go! This way! Go into this as prepared as you can be. Wine tasting is war! Well, maybe not war. But you need to have a mission, and your mission should reflect what you want your guests to get out of it. Are you trying to show off your new wine cellar? Is it a potluck where everyone's bringing their own wine? Or are you trying to broaden the horizons of all of your friends who only drink out of a box? Or do you want to play Guess the Grape, which can be fun in spite of the fact that nobody wins this game, ever. It's terrible. Regardless, mission always wins the day. Missionary, not so much. There are a thousand great ways to theme your wine tasting, and only one bad way. No theme at all. Maybe you're planning a trip to Greece and you want to make your guests feel bad that they're stuck at home. Or maybe you just came back from Napa and you want to bring your trip back with you. Or maybe you're really, really into natural wine because you're 24 and your beard has just reached your sternum. Even if you're just trying to get rid of some extra wine you picked up, find the common thread. It can be region, it can be grape, it can be winemaking, it can be winemaker, it can be technique. And just like with Mission, write your theme down on paper in a word or two, even if it's something as simple as wines that begin with the letter P. If you don't have your bottles yet, buy them now and plan accordingly. With a wine tasting, it's never a good idea to do a full glass. A two or three ounce pour is sufficient. Remember, the drunker people get, the less capable they are of engaging with the wine's finer points. The drunkening should be saved for after the tasting and before the orgy. Each bottle should give you around eight three ounce pours. And there's no shame in using a three ounce ramekin to portion these out instead of eyeballing it. Four wines in and your eyeballs will no longer be in fighting shape. And it's a good idea to have a couple bottles of each wine on hand for after the tasting. If people respond very positively to one wine, they're going to be eager to crack one open. And if they respond negatively to it, they're going to want to have one to throw against the wall. If these are high-end wines, you probably won't have extra, and that's okay. Unless you're Scrooge McDuck. And in that case, buy up the whole vintage. And maybe buy yourself some pants. Now, if this is a Zoom tasting, you're going to want to be a little bit more flexible with the wines that you pick. If at all possible, come up with alternatives for those people who don't have access to your particular wines. Unless this is a winemaker-specific tasting, there's no harm in recommending another wine from that same region using the same grape or grapes. And when you plan the order of the tasting, you want to move from lightest to heaviest and then put the bubbles and sweet wines at the end. If it helps, think about it the way that you would do dinner. Salad, then veggies, then protein, then pop rocks, and then dessert. Part of hosting a wine tasting is knowing what the hell you're drinking. Aromas and flavors can be fun to pick out, but you need to be able to offer value to your guests other than something that they can already figure out for themselves. Make sure that you can say something about the grape or grapes that are used in the wine, the region where it comes from, the winemaker, and then you can launch into your tasting notes. This is where it's useful to, you know, crack open a bottle early, you know, before the guests come, you know, for research. And certainly not to dull the dread that we are completely alone and defenseless in a universe that will ultimately devour us. Oh. Uh, some of this information you can get from the label, but don't rely on it. Be general about the flavors that your guests can expect from the wines, and then let them come to their own creative conclusions about it. Visit the winemaker's website if they have one. You might find some tasting notes, and they'll usually provide a little bit about their story, which can be very interesting. However, you will see some recurring themes. They learned how to make wine from their French and or Italian grandparents. The vineyard has been around since the 13th century, although the winery itself has only been there since 2013. 
They're merging old world farming with modern day winemaking techniques. And in the case of U.S. wines, they named their wine after a beloved family member and or pet. Snoopy. Snoopy Acres. If they say anything else other than these things, that's what you want to include. I would imagine the number of you who have teleprompters in your dining room is quite small. So, script out your speech and write down all the keywords on index cards. If you want to provide informative tasting cards to each guest, all the better. That's very cool of you. But the onus is still on you to say something informative and authoritative about the wines. But be brief, because all your guests really want is to get that alcohol into their mouth. Organizing your notes will keep you from rambling, as will staying away from knapsacks and banjos. Little known fact, food and wine go well together. If you're focusing on a specific region, use foods from that region. As the famous saying goes, what grows together goes together. But use your head. Just because that cab came from Napa doesn't mean it's going to pair well with an avocado and orange blossom muffaletta. Use common rules of thumb like sweet wines go with salty foods, sweet foods go with sour, high acid wines, and desserts need a wine that's even sweeter than them. Doesn't matter how much Big Coco tells you that Cabernet Sauvignon and chocolate are a match made in Hershey heaven, they usually bring out the worst in each other. Also, you're not designing a meal to go with your wine tasting. Just a bite, a tiny snackum, a molecule of nosh. Otherwise, you can wear out your guest's palate too early. Tapas, baby, tapas. What kind of glassware do you need for your tasting? Keep it simple, unless you really don't wanna. All you absolutely need is a clean glass for each new wine. It can be helpful to have a smaller glass for white wines, a larger glass for red wines, and a flute for bubbles. And if you want the full scoop on the ins and outs of glassware, you can check out my video on wine glasses. Links down in the description. Do you need fancy crystals? Nah. Unless you're talking about my stripper friend, Fancy Crystal. She will make your wine tasting memorable. You will need some white paper and writing utensils for each guest. And make sure you have some extra on hand in the case of spills. The white paper serves two functions. The first is so that guests can record their thoughts about a wine's aromas and flavors and palates. But the second function is to provide a white background against which they can evaluate the wine's color and intensity. Wine is not just an olfactory, gustatory, and booze-goggling substance. It is also visual. Encourage your guests to record their thoughts about the wine's color and intensity. Finally, don't be a winezilla. Your tasting is going to go south in some way. Don't micromanage your guests' experiences. If your guest says that their Sauvignon Blanc smells of blackberry jam and dark chocolate, just look at them and say, oh, that's interesting, and then watch them for signs of a stroke. So those are nine tips for hosting the perfect wine tasting. If you have other tips or questions, please share them down in the comments below. And if you want videos twice weekly about all things wine, click subscribe and maybe even click that bell. And as always, rock out with your corks out.